Spirit Whispers 1. I don't know who to thank for this bliss. I cannot explain the mystery of the flame on my fingertips, at the edge of my spirit. But I am grateful to be this alive. 2. An angel, like a winged bull, comes. Not a teacher, but a midwife, to lift me up so that I can give birth to beauty. Beauty drawn from the spirit, for only in this beauty is truth found. I wake up from a death, a corpse that knows only reason and logic, to find my spirit waiting, neglected, but willing to show me breath and teach me light. And so I step out of my silence into my body's music and find that there I am not alone. There is a circle of faces blowing their breath upon me to help me remember, to recognize myself. I peek through the clouds, just my head and neck emerge. My head rotates, casting my eyes in wonder. Here my lungs feel most clear. This is not a drug for short-term pleasure, but a temporary awakening. This is where I go when I want to hear the sunshine sing within me. This is the closest to rapture that man can get. Here is no doubt, no uncertainty. This is the purest man can be, the most singular, the clearest. This is the most perfect experience. For mangoes can have green patches, wine can be corked, clouds can cover the sun, but this is a long, sweet smoothness, perfectly held in the universe's embrace, with heaven's warmth. 3. We need so little. Most times, all we need to fill our stomachs are our memories and imagination. There is beauty in this imagination that makes odd-shaped things beautiful. Our needs are small, for even a tiny flame can light a palace. Our needs are very simple, but only when we are awake do we know that to surrender to the ecstasy of our humanity, the ecstasy of love, the ecstasy of our senses, the ecstasy of creative purpose, is to live the fullness of the human experience. Ecstasy is the spirit's best friend. When the body leaves the spirit, we stand in ecstasy. Upon our death, our bodies are invested in the earth to provide for future bodies, just as our spirits return to the source to provide for future spirits. We are always holding hands. All we need for peace is to awake to the knowledge that we are always holding hands. 4. Our clutter flies and pierces our chests like bullets and shrapnel. Out of our backs, words fall, arranged in beauty. Our bodies are filters, revealing wisdom. The human experience is so finely poised between darkness and light. That which brings wisdom can also blind us. That which brings ecstasy one moment can drown us in despair the next. But we know that where there is joy, there is wisdom. We can always choose to smile. This is why sometimes our spirits just want to be free and childlike, to laugh and run about carelessly with arms waving wildly in the warm afternoon wind. Man's obsession with knowledge will rid him of pleasures. When we deconstruct joy, we no longer have joy, and so never know wisdom. Some mysteries must remain mysteries. 5. Beware, our eyes are most easily deceived. Just the wave of a magician's wand fools our eyes into impossibilities. We in turn are fooled by the lies that our eyes accept. We should know that truth cannot be seen by the eye. It is only seen by the spirit. We need to quieten the flesh, to hear the whisper of the spirit, like the whisper not of the ocean's waves, but of its vibrations. 
The noise of haste distorts whispered wisdom, leaving our spirits parched. The well is dry when we merely think and feel, but overflows when we listen with our spirit's ears. Can the spirit refuse to speak, leaving us dumb in our silence? Or is the spirit always speaking, but we are too distracted to hear? We need unspectacular moments, like the darkness needed for stars to shine. Only during winter, in the absence of foliage, do we see the beauty of a tree's structure. We need to spend more time listening than worrying about not being able to hear. We can open or close our mouths, and so choose to speak or be silent. We can open or close our eyes, and so choose to see or not. But we cannot open or close our ears. They are always open, always available to hear, always ready to listen. This is our most important faculty. 6. How does the fruit tree spread the magic of its seed? It produces a sweet fruit to be picked and consumed, the seed invested in the earth. The fruit has to be taken for wisdom and magic to grow. Our dreams are the fruit. They have to be picked and eaten. We have to walk our path. We have to fly to be alive. We should learn from seagulls that have discovered that when they tap their feet on the soil, earthworms emerge, providing a meal. Sometimes we need to tap on the surface of impossibility to bring dreams to reality. We have to speak to the mountain, store our wisdom there, and listen to the mountain to hear wisdom of those before. We can never predict what we will hear or whether we will hear anything at all. But we must listen. Tap the mountain lightly with your palms, like the footsteps of a mountain leopard, to awaken the voices. I hear these voices in my flesh. There are taste buds all over my body that sing delightful, sweet melodies. 7. Shout with joy. No words, just the sounds of our spirits quivering in delight. Sprinkle each breath with glitter of sound to see our spirit's joy as we hear it sing.